Smile. You're on candy camera. I'm on there. Uh huh. Yeah. Auntie Nicole got it for me for the cray craze. I'll be driving around. Yeah, this cop. This, oh, this cop got shot. Hey. Oh, Y'all yeah. got the wrong person. It wasn't me. Shut up. Put out an APB. Let's get this perp without a social media frenzy. Shit. I know that. I ain't shoot no cop, then I can prove it. Everybody keeps asking where the fuck the dash cam and the chest cam got. Officer Joel Murphy is in critical condition and continues to fight for his life. We have her. Hold on one second. She has her video and we have Joel's. Alive. Do you copy? I'm tired of me, man. I think we just went from shot to kill. Together, we're going to make sure that the world knows that the truth is the only real hero. Right, all right. What is up, everyone? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Liza Monet Morales. I'm so grateful to you all for being here. Big shout out to my team from Work From Home Network TV for helping us do this, as well as to all of you for tuning in. So today's pretty special chat uh, to all my Mexicanos. I first want to say Feliz Día Independencia. It's a big day for us. Happy Independence Day. Uh, but that said, it's also the release of Intolerance No More on iTunes and Amazon. And what better way than to actually celebrate by doing a deep dive, not only into the film, but how it actually parallels so much of reality. When we shot this a couple years back, nowhere in any book would it, it be safe to say, did we know that we were going to be so on the money in 2020? So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our director. We have some key personnel, if you will, from our crew also joining us as well as my fellow castmates. So first and foremost, Sergio, how are Hola. you? Hola, how are you doing guys? What's up? Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you, yourself? Uh, I mean, you know, doing what we can in the middle of 2020. So first and foremost, Sergio, I just want to say congrats to you for having the vision, right, uh, of putting together a movie that really, I think, encapsulates just the frustration of society at large, but at the same time leverages the power of what we all know today has really made a difference this year, which is citizen journalism. So for those at home who haven't seen the film or who haven't watched the trailer, as you saw, we started the, the show today with the trailer. But to even go a little bit further, what inspired the idea for Intolerance No More? Well, uh, first of all, let me say that thank you, Eliza, to put all this together. Thanks to you and your team. A special thanks also to all the cast and crew that, that, that went with us, you know, they, they jumped to the call pool together. And, and thanks to everybody and the work of everybody and the talent of everybody, we, we were able to put this together. This is uh, the release of the film it is literally a milestone in my life as a filmmaker. So I'm really, really happy. Now about the inspiration, the, the, there were two um, particular things that called my attention. The first one was that I, I was watching the TV and I saw a, a, a TV news or every single day at five o'clock, you see the news of police uh, uh, chases and, and, and how the media covers that, th those pursuits. And, and that's something that really caused my attention that networks spend millions and millions of dollars in this kind of situations, which makes prejudice uh, uh, in, in large. And the second one is that I was um, doing a research and I find out that the same year that we shot the movie, 174 people die in the hands of police brutality. So that was very, a very shocking uh, uh, revelation. And, uh, and I find out that 50% the of, the, of, the, of the victims were African-Americans and the other 50% were Latinos. Wow, that just, I think just hearing that in and of itself, the statistics, the statistics that we know, but even hearing them repeated really hit home, especially in 2020, when I really believe black and brown unity is something that isn't just vital, but it's essential. I mean, they go hand in hand. People talk about being allies, but I really have shared with my community how I really see us partners in this fight because black lives matter first and foremost, period. 
And Latino lives can't even matter until we acknowledge as a community that black lives matter, right? Like we don't even have a full seat at the table. That's why our children are in cages, right? That's why we are having situations like what happened with Vanessa Guillen, where within the military, they're not being protected. So I love that your film really took what was in the news and then spun it on its head to do what I like to say is artivism, right? Where you really combine art with activism in a way that it allows you to have a conversation about really difficult conversations to begin with, that people normally at the table don't wanna talk about politics, don't wanna talk about crime or taxes, right? So I love that your film and you know, in our film, I should say, really allowed for that to happen. And so in putting everything together, I know that it starts with, of course, having an amazing producing team and then, of course, the crew that comes one by one. So I wanted to bring on Jennifer uh, and Mauricio, who actually kind of tag team. They were both in front of the camera and behind the camera. And I think it's super important. And I'd love to see how they uh, came to partner up with you. So Jennifer and Mauricio, welcome to our channel. Hi. Hi. How Hi. are you? Hi. How incredible is it that we're literally in the virtual world right now? Talking about this. <laughs> I mean, basically, my character has come to life in the movie I play, as you all remember, Lola. And she is a literally a very well known live streamer on YouTube. And she has all the Lola news. So, this is literally all the Lola news. It's totally. It's totally I, Lola Lola, Lola news. Definitely. I'm going to yeah. call it. Sergio is a clairvoyant. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So yeah, no, let, let, let me tell you something. When when uh, when we were doing the casting, and and and, um, and 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 Lola walk into the room for the casting, I say, you know what? She's Lola, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lisa was like, a, you know, I, I, somehow I wrote it before I met her. You know, that's amazing. That's it's amazing. So it's literally the feedback of anyone or like on casual campuses where they've seen it and people that went to our premiere and stuff, they're like, no, Eliza, this is literally you. Like, this is you totally. as a six year old come to life. I'm like, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I love it. It's perfect. People it probably, out. probably people would probably think that Sergio knew you before and he wrote the part for you. Totally. You know? totally. But magically it just, you know, it's when it fits, it fits. It's perfect. Yeah, so yeah. And you two gotcha. both fit like a glove as well for the production. So tell us, what is it about Intolerance No More that really drew you to the script and specifically to the way that it was shot? So again, for those that just watched uh, the, the trailer, they're going to see that the angles that we use are from not just a traditional camera, but it's cell phone, security visit, you know, uh, GoPros. So we really went about this in a very unconventional way, which either makes people want to be more hands on or be like, nah, I'm good, Ted, you know, like, do you. So like, what was it about that that really appealed to both the both of you? Well, um, you know, Sergio and I go way back over 20 years. You know, I got to work in um, A Day Without a Mexican with Sergio Rao and Yareli Arismendi. And that's where um, I met Sergio um, Guerrero. And <laughs> we know it's Sergio Guerrero. <laughs> I'm just so, I get so excited. Um, and Vero, Veronica, his beautiful Venezuelan yeah. wife. Uh, Viva Venezuela, I am Venezuelan. And she is one of my soul sisters that I met when I first got back and I was pregnant and I was working production and that's where we met. And so to me, it's uh, it, the minute that he, um, you know, we did our film and then we we were just back and forth. We always wanted to do something together on the, on the production, you know, level. And when he, when he called us and he said, I have this script, I want you to read it. Let me know what you think. Do you think we can get this done? We literally sat down and read it in 40 minutes, like nonstop. You know, sometimes they like, send you a script and you're like, oh, yep. you got to put it down and I'll finish it in uh, let's go eat. You know, no, this script was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I, I was mean, the same. I was literally the same. Literally. And so the both of us just looked at each other and we're like, we got to make this work. We got, this is amazing. So we called you, Sergio, if you remember, we were like, oh my God. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So it was a no brainer, um, you know, because it's such an important story. Right. And jump in whenever you want, baby. And, the, and uh, for me, the most important thing besides the script was we are doers, right? True Form Films is about figuring out a way to get something done and not be stopped by anything. 
Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of limitations and, and Sergio came in with those limitations already, right? And we said, oh no, it can get done. <laughs> We're going to figure this out. Us three with, with Dwayne Cox, right. because he's the other producer on this, Shut up, Dwayne. Four together and mastermind how this was going to be done. And we got it done, man. And, Con puras ganas. And, you know, I think the team, the teamwork is, is always essential. And, you know, we are one of the production teams, right? So we brought um, the locations. It's like, how are we going to do the cheese? And how are we, you know, so we had worked in Sun Valley and that's, like don't worry we'll find we'll find the back roads we'll find you know things like that we'll find that, the cop we, that, we, we you know found all you the just, police stuff um and but what she's saying is so important the the, the collaboration the, the collaboration and the team that said you Sergio, Sergio also brought in an incredible dp, DP oh my god you uh, know so the mix of people were right on the money to make this production get done in 10 days ladies and gentlemen uh, yes. we got done in 10 days in los angeles yes yes, yes. Oh, where's that hill where are you oh, we lost up his internet but he'll be back he'll join yes. us God, gotta love the internet but i think you know he was being so flattered he was like i'm good but i think you actually bring up another point was just how much like clipped for time we were but it didn't matter we were like yo we got to make it work and make it sassy let's keep it going and to the end, I actually want to bring on Adi and Walter uh, from our team as well. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 It's so great to see you and have you here both. Adi, you know, you did such a great job of keeping us on track, uh, being with our supervisor, right, uh, with the script. And we're going to even speak in Spanish. That's the other thing that a lot of people don't know with our film is that we had a bilingual cast uh, many times. And... That really provided an ease of flow, if you will, to be able to have a shorthand with each other. Uh, yeah. And so I think that that's super important as well. So Sergio has joined us again. Uh, yeah. Gotta love the internet. <laughs> yes. All good. Pero Ari, ya que estás aquí con nosotros, dinos para ti, ¿por qué fue este proyecto algo importante que tú debería, que sintiste que tenías que ser parte? Mira, antes que nada, yo le quiero dar las gracias a ti. Sergio, a Jennifer, a Mauricio, a Walter, a todos. De verdad que hicimos un trabajo excepcional. A mí como latina, creo que es muy importante tener empatía con el de al lado. No importa la raza que seas. Y eso para mí, fuera de hacerlo de, como trabajo y como parte de un crecimiento profesional, fue muy importante. Porque si el mundo tuviera más empatía con el otro, así como nosotros con los afroamericanos, los afroamericanos, con los chinos, con los latinos, con todos, este mundo sería mucho mejor. Entonces, para mí esto, esto fue como uf, lo rico de este proyecto. Sí. Y tienes una memoria que puedes compartir con nosotros. Estaba preguntando antes si todavía tenías tus notas y me estabas diciendo que sí, porque yo sé que fue una locura porque que una vez estábamos que, ok, es un car chase, luego otra estamos que corriendo acá atrás de uno de otros en una moto, luego estábamos en el estudio, ¿verdad? Entonces me gustaría saber de las notas que tienes, si tienes como unos momentos que de verdad te recuerdas como que, wow, esto de verdad fue una experiencia que casi se siente como que era real. Híjole, pues mira, las notas realmente, mi, mi chicharito fue, fue Sergio. O sea, yo aquí, aquí, aquí físicamente no te tengo las notas, pero sí tengo muy buenas fotos. No sé si se va a poder ver, oye, te vas a enseñar así. Mira, por ejemplo, aquí estamos con el equipo, todos, ay, súper contentos, súper, ve qué buen equipo, eso, para que se vea grandote. Y luego aquí, te digo, yo estaba pegada a Sergio todo el tiempo, entonces, pues sí era un poquito difícil eh, hacer la continuidad por el tipo de cámaras, como mencionaste, que se utilizaron. Entonces, pues, mmm, Ahora sí que nos la rifamos, ahora sí que fue así como, uy, esta toma va a salir así, así, pero bueno, vamos, ponerle detalle, pero salió bien, o sea, es que esa es la magia, la magia de todo, ¿no? O sea, grabas una película, pero también en la edición la, la haces realidad, entonces yo creo que ahí fue donde también Además, fue. Ari, Ari tuvo un cameo, además, nos hizo el favor de actuar. <risa> sí, 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 no, tuve muchas oportunidades y... Bueno, yo estaba siendo estudiante en ese entonces, entonces aprendí muchísimo de estos grandes tiburones. No, qué bueno. Um, I know that we have a question from Tally143 wanting to know if the film itself is in English. Yes, it is. It is in English. But uh, we were just sharing that our crew, some of them um, didn't necessarily, English isn't necessarily their first uh, language, and that was okay with us because 
several of us were bilingual, so that was easy for us to vibe with as well. Uh, one of the things I would love to know also, Walter, from you is, you know, speaking about real life, is that we had so much of it now that looks like real life. So puedes hablar con nosotros de compartir cómo es que, like when art meets magic, if you will, right? Movie magic. ¿Cómo fue la experiencia para ti? Uh, for me, it was a great experience, uh, especially for the the way the team work and the technique that Sergio and Javier use with all the different cameras. I think that that's very uh, innovative in a way, and and that's going to be like groundbreaking. I don't think there are many movies that are used with um, camera GoPro only and security cameras. On there wasn't any camera high end like a studio will use. And that helped really capture the way the reality is captured by people with phones, with security cameras, and footage design. Uh, that was very interesting and very appealing for me for the technical part of it. Uh, the other thing that Sergio asked me to help with was the motorcycle riding, and that was a lot of fun for me because. Uh, for once, I wasn't chasing anybody. I was chasing and they weren't chasing me. So, so, so that, was a, that was the fun part. And we, have, and we have permission from the police to, you know, cut in lines and go at speed and do all the stuff. So that was a lot of fun. And, um, and it was interesting to be able to, to capture with, with the cameras mounted in the, in the motorcycle and the helmet and, and play that little part. So that was, that was a great experience for me. Uh, the main that. thing. Yeah, the main thing is like the theme on society-wise and um, what we live in day to day. That's uh, that's where the the film really clicks, and and it's a must-see movie nowadays because uh, the only way to, to to fix the way that we had to deal with police and walking in the streets and security and everything, it's um, it, it's for everybody to participate. It's the police by itself is not going to fix this and the people retaliating uh, is not going to help either. So that's, that's the main thing and something that people have to share and, and, and watch a movie and think about it. I think it's a great thing to start conversations and to really uh, discuss how, how to approach this, you know? Um, yeah. I think you bring up a really great point, Walter, and I think that's what we were saying. It's just interesting because we shot this now several years ago, but even when I had shown the trailer and several of my community members had watched it, I got all these DMs like, did you all just shoot this this year? Because like it it literally looks like you ripped it from the headlines this year. I was like, nah, nah, nah. We, our director had a crystal ball. I mean, we knew the problem was bad then, right? But I think, and, and you know, being uh, in the live stream world as long as I have, like now 12 years and being a pioneer in, in this space, like I knew the impact of where we were going with what, live stream, but the way that it is now really empowered everyone to be a citizen journalist is something that brings me such joy. I keep telling everybody that this phone that we all have has provided us more protection as black and brown members of this country and now even around the world than even some of those behind the badge, right? Because we've been able to see it, it's really what is allowed for change to happen. And I think Walter, right. to your point, you really highlight that so well. And Adi, to your point of really being behind the scenes of, you know, creating a, a project that really creates a sense of equality, which I think is awesome. So. Thank you both so much for being here with us. Before we let the two of you go, is there something that you would want to say uh, as to why someone should watch this film if they haven't all, uh, you know, thought of watching it already? Just as a reminder, it's available today on iTunes and Amazon. Um, but why would you say in Party Walter, should people watch this? Um, I say people should watch it because it's something that touches to live every day. Uh, not too long ago, like last week, uh, here in, my, in, in my, the building that I live, uh, we have a case of two African-Americans. One was trying to steal a bicycle across the building and the other one was just here homeless. And we, you know, the neighbors called the police and stuff. And then you start thinking like, well, this could end up really bad, you know? And, yeah. you know, and it's nothing that is too serious of, or because nothing really was touched at the end, you know, nothing really happened, but depends how, uh, things are say or played out, this can end that really bad. And it's just like right in your house, you know, in your backyard. So it's something that people deal with it every day. Um, 
and and it's something to take conscious about it and and you know and participate you know go and vote try to participate on on the neighborhood events and know your neighbors and i don't know you know just just be aware of, of the whole uh, country the way it is and the way society behaves because um, we, we have a long way to go, you know, to, to make this uh, good for everybody. Right. I love it. Thank you, Walter. And Ari, antes que te vayas, tienes un consejo para alguien, pero si ellos están pensando de ver esta película, ¿por qué es importante de verla? ¿Que nos podrías compartir? Claro que sí, yo creo que es muy importante que todos tengan conciencia de la problemática que está pasando, no solamente en Estados Unidos, sino también en bueno, en este caso, en esta película es en Estados Unidos, pero en muchas partes del mundo debe ser igual. Y yo creo que vuelvo a lo mismo. Todos tenemos que, que tener empatía, tenemos que, que ayudar al de al lado, dar amor. Y, y este tipo de películas nos sensibilizan para poder tener ese sentimiento y poder pues, compartir lo mejor que tenemos como seres humanos. Porque ahorita no nada más es generación cristal, uy, qué delicados somos. No, o sea, sí. no nada más por el lado malo, sino somos gener generación cristal para sensibilizarnos en lo bueno, ayudar y sumar en todo y a todos, para que pues, hagamos un mundo mejor. Ay, sí, me encanta. Pues muchas gracias, Ari y Walter, por estar con nosotros. Ahora tenemos a uh, otros también, pues, socios gracias. que estamos en la película. The Walter and Ari, thanks for joining us. We have some more cast members that will be joining us as well. Thank we you, guys. Thank you all. All right, bye. bye. So as, as we keep it moving, we're going to keep on flowing uh, as well and bring on uh, our police officers to kick it off, if you will. But as we segue over into that, I think it it definitely uh, merits holding some space for for you, Sergio, and even for you, Jennifer Mauricio, um, in front of the film, I'm gonna speak to you as actors now, as opposed to even being producers, because you both played a, a really interesting role of being the reporters on the scene. And we've seen that, and we've seen how media is or is not covering protests and some of the other things. So Sergio, what was it important for you in terms of how to portray police officers, because I know that that was controversial in and of itself. And I think what I love about our film is that we really get at the heart of the matter that the truth isn't always black or white, even though sometimes it is pegged black or white based on skin color. So yeah, one of the, the things that, that were really important from the very beginning on the script that I co-wrote with, with Jennifer Irons is that, that you, you cannot just have a black and white kind of a story. You have to have all the angles, as many as angles as you can. So that way the audience will identify with your characters and also it will bring some truth to your story, you know, and so you, you will keep the audience until the end. So one of the, those was a very important points in, in, in the story. And literally every time that we screen the, the film in festivals or, or, or in communities, we see the reaction and the reaction is amazing because we really are sparking the conversation. We really, every time that we screen, we create some conscious, we, we you know, it's, it's, it has been a beautiful, beautiful experience in terms of the, the journey of the, of the whole film. So yeah, that's, I think that's one of the, the, the main things that, the, the goals that we, were, we went from, from the beginning to the production, you know? Yeah, I completely agree. That's why I feel like it's so important. Um, Jennifer or Mauricio, did you have anything to add from the other side of the camera as well? Well, one of the things that I really appreciate about also Sergio's mission and goal is not, it's also the conversation about diversity in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. About making it equal and then making it fair. So it also goes in with Black Lives Matter. The way we he went about this film, he made sure that Everybody watching this film saw the world as it is. So you see Latinos, you see African Americans, you see Caucasians, you see an Asian lead in our film. So we're covering not only uh, the theme of the movie, which is is so Pretty much Black Lives Matter, you know, right now, but also about the the talk about the Emmys and the you know not having enough uh, Emmy nominations. Here is a movie that if everybody gets behind it, Latinos, uh, African-Americans, everybody, here's a movie that that we need to support, the, that we need to get behind and say, look, here we are, we are here to stay. We have the same amount of talent in front and behind the camera. Not right. only was it written by a Mexican, but also an African-American wrote this film. So 
all that that encompasses this film is so special from the moment um uh, you know it's it's bigger than us it's multicultural harmony the way that Ooh, i, I like that. That. you know i mean for me that's always been a dream um i it is it's just a no brainer you know we're human beings where it's one race it's the human race you know and and the, the the multicultural harmony color of different colors is beautiful. That's what makes life so interesting and so special. So right. this film, not only was it like an incredible like read, but just also his his ingenious of like like he when he was trying to explain. Okay, but it's not going to be like with the typical cameras. You're probably the only character that's going to be in front of a regular camera. And I'm like, what do you mean? No, because everything's going to be captured either with the phones or with a, you know, security cam or with the computer. And I'm like, what do you, I don't, no entiendo, no entiendo. So it was so amazing to then, he's like, it's all in my head. Don't worry, we're going to, and then so and when, when Javier came in, <laughs> and there was like, I don't know, over 25, 26 cameras to get ready and to put everywhere. I mean, it was just incredible to see all of it come together to capture life in, a, in its real essence, which is from every angle yeah. and from every culture and from every experience um, in this world. So I love that I, you were that, Jennifer, because I had the opposite experience when he literally, and he probably was thinking I was so strange, but when he was like, okay, so you're are not going to be shot with like a typical camera. I was like, oh, okay. So we're going to do like cell phones. And I was, he's like, yeah. I was like, okay, do you want one, two? I have like a tripod. We could do three. I have like a little tripod. <laughs> he was like, okay. I'm like, I have my four cameras, like my four phones. I do this all the time from like angles. Are we doing, sure. like, oh, that makes so much sense. But to me, it was like, that is how we shoot in like for live stream and when we want to like normalize things. So to really be able as an actor, which, you know, I'm classically trained, but to re be able to like bring my training as an actor to like my profession as a host to my yeah. you know other skill set as a live streamer and really combine them with such a joy and such a gift and really building Lola from the ground up. And I think you, you bring that up, Jennifer, like it was cool that he had that mega meld, if you will, going on in his head. Absolutely. There, there is a, there, there's one scene where, where, the, where the police officer is lying on the, on, the, on the ground. There were 20 cameras and 10 microphones rolling at the same time. <laughs> Totally, the dash cam, the the dash cam, and the and the chest cam, and I mean, and the helmet cam. Oh, sad! It was just like unbelievable. We got to give a shout out to our, our sound guy, also Ray yeah. Guyona. Oh my oh, Ray god, Ray Guyona, amazing! Yeah, yes. he, was, he was the hero that said, "I got that's, this." I got that, this. That, that's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons why we achieved the the the, the whole production in ten days, which sounds crazy, but we did it in ten days. Yep. Yep. Yes, we did. And I just want to give you a shout out, um, Liza, because you've been in this virtual world way longer than all of us. And you're like, so as soon as, you know, COVID hit, it's like we all had to pivot into this virtual world. And you're like, I got, I got this. this. Don't worry, you guys. Yes. We're going to be fine. <laughs> like, Let's go. Let's go. Ready? Go. No, no, it's all right. Right. <laughs> I, I so love that you talk about it really being this harmony among things and really talk about the representation matter of it all, because one of the things that we actually launched today, actually with Lima Coalition, which I'm, I'm proud to be a part of, is actually the Lima test. And I was so happy because like I was like, our film passes the Lima test, yes! And that really was, we wanted to create something. And really it was something that we've seen. I mean, since I'm a child, I was told I wasn't Latina enough. I'm sure you've gotten that too, Jennifer, because I was too oh, light-skinned no, or they would- well, yeah, the four of us here are white people. All of us, but that, but yeah. they'd be like, Liza, you don't sound, you you sound too smart. You're not ghetto enough. Can you like bring a ghetto accent? And I'm like, how am I in a casting asking for a ghetto accent to sound Latina? This is ridiculous. So what part of us for us like really wanted to start the Lima test was for that. We were like, listen, with the tax collector, there was so much controversy about that film, seeing the Emmy nominations, aside from Alexis Bledel, which I appreciate her being human, but aside from that, there were no other Latinos, Latinas, Latinx, Hispanics, whatever you want to call it. We weren't represented, okay, in any major category. And you can't right. tell me we don't have actual talent. Everything from on my blog even to like shows like Hentified, like, you know, yeah. one day at a time. Like, I mean, the list, 
Totally. So did I, right? So what we did was, and I want to um, just briefly talk about those points, just because I think for anyone watching, I really want to give a shout out to one of my uh, members of my community, uh, Rich Lord Price, uh, Prince, who's watching actually from Ghana, and he's already streaming it now. He's with us, but it is you know, about, about us coming together. So for the Lima test, for one, we wanted to make sure that the script uh, humanizes the Latinx community, doesn't just perpetuate negative stereotypes. We totally do that. Number two, is it written and or directed by a Latinx member? We totally have that. Number three, <laughs> is there at least one leading Latinx character whose contributions are pitiful and are gonna be included in the marketing? Hey, we totally have that. Um, and they are real. Um, yeah, yeah, written by Latinx and being played or voiced by Latinx, yes. And then is the language sensitive to issues in our Latinx community? Something even as simple as undocumented versus illegal, which is a huge thing for us, right? But there's other sensitivities that we have in terms of portrayal of our community. And I'm so proud to say that our film does pass all those five points. So big yes. shout out to you, said yes. for Lima yes. Test. Now with that, I do want to pivot and welcome in uh, our officers. One of our other, here's another thing that I also think is really special about our film is that the leading ladies, which are all on the poster right behind you, in addition to myself, we have Paulette who couldn't join us today, Helen Kennedy who plays uh, you know, the reporter, and then we have Christina Morrell who plays one of the officers. So women power, that was another right? so let, oh, yes, let's do this for so technically, <laughs> technically we also passed the Mitchell test, the Black Child test too. I was like, hey, we got to get some through. So look at that go checking all the boxes. So do want to bring on Christina as well as Jim Marshall who plays her boss and Renee who plays one of the other officers as well. So Christina, I would love to start with you. What was it like, especially being given where we're at right now, uh, you know, with 2020 and even with the sense of police brutality, your character really is the voice of police on the field of so much. So if we could start with you there, what was that like then and even more so now being in the midst of where we're at? Um, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for making my dream of being on Ola Lola News a reality. <laughs> that for two years. Um, but to your point, uh, it actually is really personal to me because my grandfather was a policeman. He actually was a, a police captain in New York. Um, he worked in Manhattan and Staten Island and was in charge of a precinct and everything. So for me, it's really important when this conversation, which is necessary, is happening, that we realize that there are humans on both sides of the equation. And what I loved about this film is that it really showed that. It humanized everybody. Like it brought up all the important questions. And so when I read the script, um, I also fell in love and I felt that I had a really big responsibility to make sure that when I played my character, that um, I showed how she, uh, she was, a, a woman of principle, like for her, it's very like she does what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do. Um, and sometimes that can be misinformed depending on what information you're exposed to and you know what you see every day on a daily basis. Um, and what I love at this point in 2020 is that this film is so necessary because it brings that conversation to to play, like it gives, what is it? Voice to the voiceless, uh, Sarah, right. what you were saying. Um, and so I just feel really proud to be a part of it, to show a woman that was doing what she believes in. Um, mm -hmm. And when I finished reading the script, I actually burst out crying. I was in a Starbucks and I was like reading, 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 reading. And I was like, Bleh! and then I had to like pretend that I wasn't because I was in public and no one knew what I was doing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that, Christina. So before we move over to Jim and Renee, who also were, you know, in badges, if you will, on screen, uh, protecting and serving, if you will, um, I, I would love it to know from your point, though, as for those at home who haven't obviously seen this, uh, the film, but have seen the trailer, is tell them a little bit about your character and how vital it is, because she is, you said, she is on a mission about being steadfast to the black and white truth she believes to know, but that may or may not be influenced by skin color as well. I'm sorry, was that for me? Yeah, that was for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I go to them, just because your character is so steadfast, exactly how you said, Christina, right? With yeah, your opinion. Yeah. 
that I would love for people at home to know a little bit more about the character because they don't know the setup necessarily other than just briefly seeing the trailer. But like, I would love for you to set it up for them, like what your character is really struggling with. So what my, gosh, what my character is struggling with is that my partner and a partnership, especially on the police force, like your life depends on trusting your partner. Um, and in this film, my partner uh, gets shot and it becomes my duty to find out who did it and to chase them down um, and to find justice for my partner. So uh, the, the stakes are really stacked for her in this film because she's out to find the truth. And also there's a really personal component that her best friend and you know support has been downed. So there's like a sense to get justice and this competing of like, but also get justice, like justice for society and justice for my best friend. So I think this, this film had a really great um, tension between those two. I love that. And so Jim, you are at the helm of getting justice, if you will, by by being our captain and, and really being the man in charge there. So can you talk a little bit about your role as well? And, you know, what it was like for you to be a part of this uh, then and even now as 2020 has taken the twists and turns that it has. Sure. And first off, I want to say how grateful I am to have had this opportunity because it's just it was a dream for me as well. Um, but as the police captain, I had a responsibility to trust my people, my, and I've, I've been where they were. I came up through the ranks and so I've done everything that they're doing, but I don't see what they're seeing. So I have to trust Emails. them and trust their words. And I have to be, I have to have their back. That's, that's my job. But I also have to be at the same time aware of the bad apples. And so I had, it's a, it's a, it was a, it's a real tightrope to walk, I think, in, in real life. And I was trying to um, incorporate that. I was trying to, to believe that myself because it's not an easy job. And, um, and with the officers, what they were faced with, that was not an easy situation. And as Christina said, it was life and death. And so um, I, took it, I took it serious. I took it from the standpoint of, um, of having been there, this is my life, my career, this is what I, I was born to do. And then, um, but I have to say something too about the cameras, all those cameras, there was just no place to hide. It was just, they were everywhere. And it was just such a, such a thrill for me to be a part of this whole thing. And, uh, and the way, and I, when I read the script, I loved it, of course, but I had no idea. I didn't have the vision that it would turn out like this. And it's just, it's beautiful. So I'm glad Sergio was doing that, not me. <laughs> yes, for sure. Jim, and I love that you mentioned the fact that you felt like there was nowhere to hide because that obviously was my intention with Sergio, but also what we're seeing right now, whether it's the case of George Floyd or even here locally with Andres Guardado or, you know, some of these other unfortunate police brutality, uh, you know, shootings, that's exactly it, is that the police feel like there's no place to hide because everyone has their cell phones out and, that needle is like moving forward because they're like, listen, mister, we're going to need some accountability around here. And this phone really, as I said earlier, has really been able to provide us with protection. So I feel like that's good and bad, right? Because what we've seen with our, our film is that sometimes there's more than one angle that needs to be incorporated or looked at or considered. And I really feel like you towed that line so well of you too, like Christina, wanting justice, but also being like, wait, 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 hold on. Is there more? Do we have to get more stuff? Like, let's figure out what that looks like. So for you, Jim, seeing where we've been in 2020 in some of these cases, did you feel like it was deja vu for you? Uh, did you feel an extra tinge of compassion, if you will, for some of the officers? Or did you feel even more empowered of like, yeah, that's right. I'm glad this is the way we're going because there's a, a little bit more sense of accountability this way. Well, it's funny. I, I, did feel, I do feel more compassion and I read a quote today that said, um, I support the police as long as they're not criminals. And I support the yeah. protesters as long as they're not criminals. So exactly. it's, it's yeah. a pretty simple stance to take. But in these yeah. days, we've, it, it, it seems like it's pretty complicated for some reason. And um, I guess it's 2020. But yeah, um, yeah so I, I, I definitely feel more compassion. I think overall, all of the cameras that we have are great. I think 
the um, the problem that sometimes I see is that we get one camera, one set of footage released, and then a day or two later, we get something that's a totally different view, and it's a totally different explanation. So I think we need to learn a little patience because um, the first view is not always the only view or the right view. Right. And I think our film shows that, but I would also even extend that to those in power, right? Because yes. a perfect example is the LA uh, police department uh, arrested a, a journalist this week. Well, several journalists, but the one in, in particular that's even come to the helm has been Josie Huang, who works for an affiliate of NPR, um, LPCC News. And she was arrested while she was literally on the job and had her credentials on her. But unfortunately, the LAPD and LA Sheriff's Department, they released a statement inaccurately claiming that she didn't have them on her. She never once uh, said that she was with the police department. And again, had this been 1988 where we didn't have cell phones, then that maybe would have slid. But guess what? KABC got the footage as well did citizen journalists. And that footage was out within minutes being like, what are you talking about? You're lying. That actually is not the case. She was screaming out what media outlet she was. She's telling you she's from the press. And you proceeded to not only try to break her phone, but arrest her and drag her inhumanely. And so it was interesting because now the backpedal has started of, oh, Villanueva is like, oh, well, now we don't know because maybe it was not a pat. I'm like, okay, bro, just say you messed up. Take, take the L. Because to your point, Jim, there's way too many cameras to try to lie about it. So public relations for the police department needs to even keep that in mind moving forward. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, ab absolutely. I think the, the they have a new responsibility, to be honest, because, you know, just, just like a, a bad criminal is going to get caught, so is a bad cop. There's, there's just too many cameras out there. Yeah, I completely agreed. Um, so shifting over to you, Renee, uh, as well, also playing someone on the beat. I saw you snapping earlier. What has this been to be, you know, as, as you're seeing 2020 go, playing this role, but also really being thrust in the middle of a social justice movement and knowing that particularly in this movement or in this movie, you're playing someone that right now, in many ways, sometimes justifiably is being called out to be more accountable and sometimes possibly is not. Well, I actually played a police officer in a couple ways in this film. Uh, first on screen, of course, but yes. also for our crew uh, when I served as first AD. So I kind yeah. of got to take that role as like an authority figure for a couple different things. So it is a lot of responsibility to, to know that I'm portraying someone of responsibility, but also for the crew and that the time that we had and just kind of keeping everything on track and it, stuff can go out of your control so quickly and you have to think on your feet and always be problem solving so it's it's definitely inspiring compassion in me when i have to play an officer or 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 uh, act and serve as a first ad because you just don't know what's going to be thrown at you and you have to make the best decision and other people depend on you to, to kind of know what you're doing. And sometimes you don't, and you just have to try to make a, a moral call or a, I don't know what the right term there is, but just a, a will call and hope it hope for the best and trust your team. Just like the police force, it, like Sarah was talking about, um, with Christina, uh, Officer Sarah was talking about trusting her partner. It's all about trust. And how do we trust each other if we're lying and trying to twist things the way that the, the news sometimes does or to get more views social media will make a titillating title just to catch those eyeballs and now we're all just what's out there is out there and i'm really glad that all of us are seeing that it's a little bit hard to be on all the time and yeah yeah and i just i, I love that yes we are I just want to say you rocked as a first AD, Renee. You were amazing. She was amazing. She was <laughs> great. So good. We, you know, we've known her Renee for a long time, and she just took it on like a champ. And I, I just am so grateful. You are a leader. You are a go-getter. You've got a huge heart. You're so talented. When and we Sergio, love you and appreciate when, you because you yeah, killed it. Sergio <laughs> said we need an incredible uh, first AD that will keep us on track in 10 days, who is not going to go crazy on me. <laughs> totally. And we said, Renee! Wait, wait, but she had no 
pre-production. This was literally they, four days, I think, or three I think days. It was before three, three, three days before we started. Days before the production. <laughs> But I'll tell you why she makes such a. I'll tell you why she makes such a great uh, first AD because she's also a producer herself. Exactly. So she understands what's at stake every day, and she is the last person to leave set with the second AD because they got to do right. schedules. Yeah. Well, so, man, we're all there, and she's also an actress. She so she understands. Right. To she she's got all these hats like we do, and so. Again, you know, we're from the same tribe, and I just wanted to give you a shout out because you thank you crushed it. <laughs> yeah, it, was I, it makes me think about. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, I, I'm saying that you were amazing, and I, I was I, I was in shock the way that you you walk into the set, you know, and, and you were fearless, literally. You just went like a okay, let's do it. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay, let's do it. You know, let's see what happened. Because everybody was saying that this movie, we, we were gonna shoot it in, in 15, 20 days. And I was going like, no, you know what? I'm paying for it and we're gonna do it in 10 days. And then yeah. I talked to Renee and I said, hey, Renee, we really have to do this in 10 days. And she said, no problem, Sergio. We're gonna do it in 10 days. Cool, all right, let's do it. I was like, all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll yeah. do it. But yeah, yeah police it. officers similarly have a similar sort of just, they're just thrown into the fray. And and I think we do need to give those officers some credit, the ones that are trying their best. And there are a lot of them out there that, that are trying to serve their communities and that that's why they joined. And we can't forget about those. Just Absolutely. like Christina's character, there there are good ones out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to say um, Mario Garcia, um, he's, um, the gentleman that we've hired for all our movies, he cop shop LA, he does all the cops, all the unit, everything, right? Mm -hmm. He's a consultant. Mm -hmm. he, when he read the script, uh, he did tell us at first how nervous he was, right? Because like, oh, he know. also needs the job, but he also <laughs> loves cops. Yeah. And um, and he, he just always wanted to make sure that everybody understood that there's also good cops mm -hmm. so this is never an attack on i don't think this movie is all an attack on on on, on the police at you know? all mm -hmm. um and and also the beauty about what i wanted to share about how we could do it in 10 days is because Siri had 26 cameras rolling let me add something a little quick um uh, the 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 police brutality issue is is, is very complicated in this movie, we try to present both sides as clear as possible, but it's, 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 a, it's a problem of, of the police force and training and et cetera. And, and also it's a problem of citizenship that we have to educate ourselves on what are our uh, rights and, and we have to learn what is going on as, as well as on, on both sides. So it's not a problem. And that's part of my cameo that I did in the movie is I'm trying to be the bridge of those mm -hmm of both sides, you know, because you cannot see it from one side. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a very complicated issue. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely agree on the complicated issue. And we're going to bring on another one of our cast members, uh, Freddie, with us. Um, but before we do, I actually wanted to um, even add on to what you said, Marty. So I had I have family in the force uh, as well and friends and, you know, my advocating uh, and activist work makes them very uncomfortable, but they're like, okay, I mean, you've been this way since you were a child. So like, we can't stop you. Like, you're like, I want receipts. I want change. So it's interesting because I invited several of them to come see this film. And for them, a few of them, it was a little uncomfortable, but I will say at least they stuck it out till the end and they're like, Okay, okay, okay. If we get to the end, I understand and I appreciate. I kind of was a little nervous there for a bit. And I was like, yeah, but you just have to watch it because it's also not going to help us move the needle forward for a change. I always tell, talk about homework for change, right, in my community. All I'm right. like, it, we can't move the needle if we actually want to play blind to the issues that are there. So by really sitting there, forcing yourself to be uncomfortable and actually get to the end, you can hear the other side, whether you want to or not, but then you'll see that your side is also being presented. And I think as we've seen, whenever we've screened this, that's what people seem to really catch on to. Lola's part of that, Helen Kennedy, big shout out to her as part of that, of showing it as well. And then, you know, every little um, nugget that Sergio's really packing into it from the views of the POVs from each of our characters, 
to really show the uncomfortableness, but then be like, okay, we're in the middle of this mess. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about accountability. And now it's up to you to really discuss what does that ending mean? And I always love that we don't really showcase or, or put what the ending should mean, but really want to see what the ending means to people, if that makes sense. I, yeah. You know, I just got chills because the ending for me is the minute where all labels melt away and it's literally just two women connecting, you know, and it's so beautiful the way it was shot, the way it was written, the way it was done, because, you know, Christina's character, there, she's not a cop anymore when she's in there. And, um, and um, oh my gosh, um, her name Paulette. is Paulette. Ah. Her, her care, she's not seen as a criminal anymore. She's a mom as well. They're both moms. It's two moms, two women connecting. And I yeah. mean, I get really emotional because it's such, at the end of the day, all these labels and uniforms mean nothing. Correct. You know, we got hearts that beat and right. that's it, you know? So yeah. I, I love it. Will it help us even bring more context to the film and definitely to talk about what's happening with Black Lives Matter. We definitely want to uh, introduce and welcome Freddie <laughs> to the chat Hi. today. Thank you so much for being here. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Freddie. So I know that you've been hearing backstage a lot about what we were talking about. So I'd love to give you an opportunity um, to jump in, right? Like what it was like to be part of this project, especially considering that 2020 is here. And for so many, that has been such a reckoning, especially when you look at police officers, police brutality, which is very heads on with what our film deals with, uh, with regards to uh, stereotypes and the African-American community. So Freddie, do you have thoughts? Well, you know, the beauty of, of our film is that not only does it highlight some of the things that, that we talk about in the community uh, as far as how we uh, we deal with the police off, uh, law enforcement. It uh, Mauricio made a good point about this. This film is not really about bashing police or anything like that. I think what it really does is just like I said, it it kind of highlights some of the things that people you know, in, in, in the larger society as a whole, doesn't know that these things may be going on or that, you know, that, oh, well, we're just talking, you know, saying this, that this is happening, but it's not really happening. But, but when actuality, there, there are some things that need to be addressed. And that's what I like about this film, you know, it shines a light on, on those things, but at the same time, it, 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 um, it kind of equalizes both sides where you can see what what's happening from her from her point of view as well as from you know law enforcement's point of view but the beauty of it at the at the end is where where they kind of come together and bring it all together it's like okay it's not where there's a compromise that is being made right in a, in a sense that you can, um, each side realizes that we need to work on things. You know, yeah. we can't just jump, you know, to things uh, uh, simply from uh, emotion and, and speculation. You know, you really have to look at the facts of things. And when you do that, you're able to balance things out and come I to love that. an agreement. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I love, Freddie, that you said that. And so, and for people at home that don't know, do you want to share a little bit about what you did on the project so that they're familiar with your character? When you say her, that we know that we're talking about Paulette, our lead character, oh. who is the one that is um, charged with potentially doing a crime. But do you want to share a little bit of insight on what your role is? Okay, yeah, I, I play Michael, the husband to Lucretia, the... Uh, <laughs> The, the the lovely actress that that's that's uh, we follow on this journey with her. We take this journey, this whole this 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 magnificent journey with her. Actually, uh, we have a kid together. We're a couple of uh you know uh, uh, high school students that kind of got married later on. 
right? And, and at some point we kind of separated and went, it went in different directions. My guy was a little bit more about trying to break away from the negative things in the community, right? And, and, and try to take on responsibility that, you know, he's got a kid, so he was trying to be a good father. And um, whereas, uh, so he's trying to keep, uh, trying to keep them, uh, his son, his son away from all these things that are going on in the community and show him a, a positive side exactly. of life and that, and try to be, as well as be a good role model for his son. Yep. yep. And so I think that that was great. I mean, and having uh, Christina, Jim and Renee with us, the cops, you know, uh, and it, it's so funny. I'm so bummed that we can't have Paulette because Paulette did such a great job with her tattoos and with everything. Also want to give a shout out to our hair and our makeup team. Corey and everyone, they did such an amazing job as well uh, as really making everything realistic. But what was so great, I loved when um, when Paulette's character uh, and yours, uh, Freddie, and, and that of Lawrence, uh, really are kind of the lifeline at different points for each other because while you're trying to kind of nag her, if you will, of like, well, where's the sun and why are you doing this and da da da, you could tell at the end of the day you still do care, right? And there's something there that's so beautiful about that. And then her rider guy with Lauren, who's kind of like, figure out how are we going to get you out? And gratefully, obviously, introduces my character, Lola, of like, I know a girl. Uh, but I, I appreciated this, like, there's triangles. I don't know if you all saw, but there was constant triangles, right, that we had in the film. So it's like, Christina, Jim, and Renee, Christina, myself, and Paulette, uh, you, Freddie, Paulette, and Lauren's character. Like, there was just constant triangles that were happening. And when they met, there was either fusion and it worked or there was firecrackers, right? And so I, I really love that your character really kind of shows the firecracker, firecracker side, where again, defies stereotypes, because it's not typical that you see the, the father being the one that's the grounded character, uh, and the mother being the one that's a bit questionable, right? So that is something that I appreciated the gravitas that you brought to that role. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, I, I was I was really trying to, uh, uh, when I was looking at Michael, you know, I, I really wanted him to be a positive image and, and, and it was beautiful that he really was actually. And yeah. uh, so that was, that, that was uh, easy for me to play in a sense, I, I guess, because it, you know, a lot of times when, you, when you're playing a, kind of a dark character, and you, you know, you may be a little judgmental about it, you know, and I, I think we, you know, as actors, we, we all make some judgment about the characters that we play. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, it was fun because I, I was really looking forward every day, you know, to go play that character, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's a present. Do you have a thought, Marisa? Yeah, I, I just want to mention this to all actors who uh, might be watching. Uh, Freddie Especially came. Students. <laughs> students. Um, Freddie came into this project because Jennifer and I uh, went to the Idaho Film Festival the year before we shot the film, and we saw Freddie in a film, and I we remembered him and kept him in that. Ooh, we got to use that actor. So I went up to him and I got his information, and when this movie came up automatically I went, I called him and I said, Hey bro, there's this movie. And he came in and uh, literally just, I think he just sent an audition to Sergio and Sergio said, I don't see anymore. We found our Michael. You know? <laughs> and so the importance of what a film festival can do for an actor, I just remembered him from that moment. Right. And a lot of times, you know, actors are other actors, agents, mm -hmm. like seriously, you know, right. through the years, right? How many okay. actors, have gotten you into a project or vice versa. So yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I also think before we go, I also think it's super important because our film literally has been the little film that could, if you will, and that oh, it has been a passion project. Said he was, he mentioned he paid for it. We were all so grateful. But in doing that, um, we even got food, y'all. So we were treated very well. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, in, in doing all that, but the reason why I bring it up is that film festivals have really been a way of us getting out there, getting our film seen, heard. Uh, you know, a big shout out again to the Mexican consulate who hosted us and we were able to do some screenings there and Q&As. 
uh, as well as with college students. We obviously had a different plan for this year, but 2020, what a year. So life before <laughs> Corona, as I like to call it, BC, uh, you know, it, it was a little different in the BC days. And one day we'll get to AC after Corona. But while we're in DC times, here um, during Corona, Sergio, I would love for you to talk a little bit about even some of the activity that we've had for the film in recent uh, film festivals, because we were in some prestigious film festivals and even won something recently, yes. which I think is really great. So if you can share that with everyone. Uh, okay, so, so well, one of the, the, the biggest ones was the, the American Black Film Festival that it just uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and that was a, a really huge, uh, big deal that they accepted us to that one. And we were competing. We didn't uh, won the, 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 the main um, uh, prize, but doesn't matter. We were there, and we were. Uh, that was a very cool approach to the to the African American community, which I love. And then uh, last week we just won uh, the I Will Tell Film Festival. That was amazing, and we've been uh, winning and, and showing the, the the film in different festivals. And also in communities, in, in screenings and small, um, uh, before COVID, we were in, in African-American communities, Latino communities showing the film and the reaction has been amazing. Really, really, really good. But I wanna take also the opportunity to thank, uh, I mean, because this is a very, um, the, the people that is not in this is on this screen, which is all the cast and crew, that they were really, really amazing we all went into this production, but especially uh, three people that, that, that are from the very beginning, in, in order of appearance, uh, Veronica, my wife, that she's been with me in dreams and nightmares, literally. <laughs> uh, um, Rolando Nichols, who was the first one who says, you know what, Sergio, you can use my, my studio, you can use my car. I mean, he went for it with us and thanks to him, it was a moment when I said, you know what, okay, let's do this movie because thanks to Rolando that he literally put everything that he had, he, he went all in. And also uh, Javier Perez Grobet, who is oh. the DP of the movie, that he really understood the challenge that it was in my head because the one thing was the script, uh, which I, uh, thanks to Jennifer Irons uh, um, that co-wrote with me, thank you for her because she brought the, the, the characters to life. but. Javier was the only one who really says, okay, Sergio, sit down with me for five days and I want to get into your, into your head. So I said, okay, let's do it. So we went five days, every, you know, eight hours a day going like, a, so what do you think about this? So what do you think? So, so we really planned the movie and it was in our heads at some point. I said, okay, so you know what I want? And he says, it's okay. Now I understand you. Let's do it. So that made my job so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hours. <laughs> so, so it, I mean, everybody, uh, the contribution, the, what is uh, when you have a beautiful and, and meaningful story like this one, the movie finds their people. It's not that I find people around. It's just the, for some reason, people start coming into the, into the bus and you just have to drive it and be careful. But I want to thank everybody for that. I love that. So before we go, though, uh, I just want to thank everyone at home for watching, everyone that's watching this replay. If you have questions, feel free to drop them below for your chance to be featured while we're live. If not, I'll be coming back to, to respond to them as well. Uh, in addition, just as a friendly reminder that starting today, Intolerance No More is available to stream on both Amazon and iTunes. We would love for you to watch it. Definitely leave us a review uh, on iTunes and on Amazon. That's a way that you can support filmmakers and filmmakers of color specifically and content creators of color uh, without having to spend a dime. Share it with your friends. Let them know uh, because it is super important if we're demanding that Hollywood continue to make space for movies that reflect our community stories. We have to make sure that we as a community are showing up for those stories in order for them to actually have that continue. So before I do take off though, I wanted to make sure that we went around again and just got some closing thoughts from our cast as to thoughts that they wanna share as we're you know heading in a couple of weeks away even from the election, making sure that we have elected officials that are representing us. And that includes voting for even who's the sheriff in your town, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. uh, but also you know keeping open minds. But uh, from the cast, I would love to know, um, what would you say to someone that is like, oh, I feel like I live this. Why should I watch this movie? So, Christina, I'd love to start with you as to what do you you think is a good takeaway for people for this film? 
Hmm. Well, uh, I just read something today that Steve Jobs said that the true uh, monitor of intelligence really is having a continual open mind. So to expose yourself to new experiences, um, to constantly be doing things that are not just of the norm of your daily life. And I think this, if, if someone feels like, oh, I've lived this every day, if they actually sat down and watched the film and kept an open mind that some new nuance may be introduced and they may actually see the situation in a, in a more gray uh, vision as opposed to black and white. I love that. Uh, Jim, I'm coming next to you as our captain. What would you say as to why people should watch this film? Well, <clears throat> I think it tells a great story of what is happening today, and it gives you a start and a finish in this story. The uh, What's evolving in the daily news is never ending. This gives you a chance to see how things can be resolved and how they should be resolved. So I, I really love that. And again, I, all the different angles, all the different cameras, that is our world today. I love that. And Renee, as well for you, since I know you were wearing so many hats and so you have some extra insight as to our passion that we put in this. But well, why would you say, what's a good takeaway as to people watching in, uh, you know, tuning in and watching the Tolerance No More? I think that one of the most beautiful things about this movie is that it's about the human condition. So seeing every single character make choices live right then that are good or bad, but you can see that they're all kind of emotionally driven for the most part, except when they're attempting to blend that into their job. So I think if we can watch this movie and just remember that we are all literally on this planet together right now, all just trying to make sense of it. And we have to stay open, like what Christina said, just keep your mind open, take this new information, try not to react emotionally to it and make a decision once you have everybody brought together in communities. So I think it, it inspires working together, trying to stay calm in your spirit and your heart and just search for truth. I love that. Uh, wow, that really, that hit home. And Freddie, what would you say? And it's, you know, 2020 has been such a difficult year for so many of us and I feel like this film really holds space to have difficult conversations that sometimes people don't want to have and that it's required. But I would love for you to to share like why you think this is a powerful tool for people to possibly use to bring up conversation or why they should watch it. Well, this is this is just a great piece to start dialogue. I, I mean, it, you in order to to uh, resolve something, you have to initiate, you know, some type of dialogue in order to, to get an answer. So what this what this film does, it, it just it, it does just that. It allows people, and and it will begin to make people think and 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 be a little less emotionally reactive, but be more rational and logical in their thinking, how they look at things and how how life is, 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 is plays out before us every day, especially in, in, in these times. And, and the, the one thing about, you know, COVID right now, it, it really makes people take a step back, take a breath and begin to think about what's important to them. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what should be, what, well, one of the things that should be important to people is that we all need to communicate, <laughs> no matter what shade of color you are, no matter what background, what job you have, communication is important. Once we begin to conquer that, just simply communicating, I think that's when we'll see a, a true change. I love that. Communication is key on all sides, as is holding space for true understanding. Now, Jennifer and Mauricio, uh, thoughts on your end? For me, I, um, you know, what Freddie said, yes, communication is key. I think that just to add to that, where are you coming from? Are you coming from fear? Are you coming from love? Right? Because when you walk around being being fearful of someone else just because they're different than you or they look different than you, there's no room for any kind of loving communication, right? As a human, as a, on a human level. So this movie 
is so powerful because at the end, that's what um, that's what melts off these women. The fear is there, but the love wins. And with that, you know, do you want to say? I I what hit me a couple of weeks ago when um, the whole movement started up again, and um, I had just heard Michael Beckwith say, this is COVID bonus. Mm -hmm. It's not COVID-19, it's COVID bonus. I really thought about our movie and how we did this two, three years ago. 2017. Uh, and and we, we were shining light on a, a, a message that has been there for many, many years. Yes. And now we're coming and this film is coming out and I want people to know that it just, it's a film that has been ongoing. It's it's a conversation that has been ongoing for a lot of us for a very very long time, and that we're just a, a a little grain of 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 the conversation to keep moving. Which is why I use this shirt today. <laughs> I wanted to put unity, strength, and change. This movie is part of that change, and it gives me goosebumps to say that because I'm we so proud high. that our company uh, was able to come on board and be a part of, of, of change. Cause change is coming like it or not. It's, it's happening coming. right now. And above all, just, um, thank you Sergio for trusting us. And, um, there's this, um, this is literally what it's all about. Our daughter <laughs> made that last with Juliana and I, um, we, we painted this, um, this last weekend because I want to give a shout out and invite all of you that are watching and all of you here to join in this movement. Um, I'm sure we all know um, you've met um, photographer Albert Ortega on the red carpet. And yeah. he is inviting all of us to write hashtag love above all um, and put it on social media September 30th. And this movie is, is this, right? I mean, really. So and the movie says it all. Intolerance. <laughs> no more. No more. No exactly. More. I love it. What is it? What is it? Yes, I, was gonna, I, I was gonna say also, Marie, I love your shirt. I have the same one. Big shout out to nosotros. When nosotros made it, I was like, yo, this shirt is perfect because it is really about us all uniting. I continue to say we have to stand united, uh, black, brown, and you know, in particular right now more than ever as partners in this fight. But it's really where our strength comes from. And when we dig in deep and continue to push forward no matter what, that's where change comes from. So I think Nosotros hit it on the head with that shirt. Uh, and as a as the founder of Love Bug Nation and I, I, being the girl who sees the world through love, uh, love-filled eyes, I love the fact that it's love above all because indeed it really is. Um, so last but certainly not least, Sergio, uh, what would you like people to take away when watching this film, particularly the ending, uh, what key messaging uh, for those out there that we want them not only to rent it, but also share it with their friends, uh, would you want to say to them? Well, now that the, the, the movie is officially out, which is a milestone, amazing, it's a journey of four years. I really want to keep sparking the conversation about police brutality, about racism and prejudice. And, and I would like to create awareness of all those issues. And, and that was the main goal from the very, very beginning of the movie. So I just want to invite everybody to watch it and, and keep creating this kind of, of, of uh, round tables. Give us your, your comments and hopefully uh, at the, you will see that at the end, the, the movie uh, has a message of hope because all my movies and all my work is based on that. I do believe that we have hope and I do believe that tomorrow is going to be better for sure. I love that. Well, last but certainly not least, I definitely want to give my parting thoughts. But before, I want to give out a shot to Denise Grow, who says she loved the movie. She thinks it brings awareness of a reality and hope. So exactly what Sergio just said. Took the words right out of your mouth, which is fantastic. Uh, right. and yeah, I, I personally would also say that, you know, on behalf of Lola, uh, what I really want everyone to remember is that everyone has a story to share and your story is important. You also have the power to influence. Oftentimes I'm asked, oh, but Liza, like, I'm not verified like you are, or I'm not on TV or in film like you are. Like, who can I influence? I'm like, okay, if you need me to be the influencer fairy, bam. Everyone that's watching, you're officially an influencer because at the end of the day, 
even if you influence one person in your household, one person that you know, you have moved the needle of change forward. And if we all take responsibility to do that, we will see a change on a bigger end. And so I've had such an honor of not only playing Lola on screen, but continuing to keep her spirit alive. I think of her often like, oh, Lola would be so proud of really being out there on the front line. So if there's a protest out there that you can join, if there is a, um, you know, a cause that you really feel passionate about, put it on your conveyor belt, do a deep dive, figure out what is the homework for change you can give people. Is it signing a petition? Is it donating to a GoFundMe that you verified? Is it, you know, writing a particular councilman or councilwoman or elected official get involved because if anything else what i learned from this movie is exactly what christina said earlier as well and and jim is that there's more than one angle to every story and that's not just a theory but we're seeing that more than ever now on the streets with people recording and sometimes the well we just we don't have to look too far these days uh to the white house but sometimes a lie travels faster than the truth so it's super important for us to hold our elected officials accountable, but also to jump in the game ourselves. Because in holding compassion for each other and having understanding for each other and recognizing that we're all one race, at the same time, it's okay to say, you know what, I was wrong, or you know what, I messed up. How do I grow? How do I learn? Because oftentimes I'm even finding that people have a hard time of letting go, kind of like Christina's character of like, I'm on this mission for justice. Nothing's going to stop me. And when the truth is presented to them in a different way than maybe they expected, they're still like, I'm on this mission. But yet, if you're willing to say, okay, you know what? I was on the mission with the information that I was given. I now have new information. I was wrong. I'm going to take the L. I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to change. Guess what? Everyone wins. It's okay to be wrong. It's something that I learned very young and I, I constantly love challenging myself of growing. So I love that quote that you were even sharing uh, as well, Mauricio, from Michael, Michael Beckenwith, um, because it is. We should really look at COVID as a bonus. I've talked about pivoting to, you know, pivoting over panicking and pivoting to positivity because when you do, that's when you find your passion. So with that, I want to thank each and every single one of you for being here with me today. I want to thank everyone at home for watching. Mm -hmm. Please do share it. And more importantly, of course, uh, uh, Sergio and our, and our team, please, 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 if you haven't already, make sure that you go check out Intolerance No More on iTunes and on Amazon starting today, and then leave us a review. We appreciate it. And then share the stream with a friend. All right, y'all, we'll see you next time on the flip side from right. my house to yours. Thank, thank, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was great. <laughs> no, 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 no.